Mill Serp Garage. Yep, that's a pretty one. It's the Browning A5. So let me see. Uh, you know, I want to feature the Browning A5, and I I don't have an old one for you guys. You know, you guys get used to this old stuff from me. I know that. Uh, this is an 84, okay? So it's one of the ones, uh, you know, the Japanese uh, production. Um, and uh, it's called the uh, Light 12 Gauge is what this thing was called. 25 inch or 26 inch I can't read my own handwriting inch barrel this thing is the, the, the invector choke so that was you know like Browning's uh, Browning's removable chokes were the invectors it's not coming out readily with my finger so you're just going to have to trust me but it's, it was their screw in choke uh, deal so it's pretty cool that it has that this wood and this checkering is uh fabulous i forgot the name of that japanese factory that does uh you know that that did the uh the browning stuff during this period but 1984 that's a that's a good period that's a good period for the browning a5 um but the history of this thing it goes so way back before that the uh the history of this thing is this was a design that uh Let's see. It was uh, designed by John Browning in 1898. Can you imagine? Patented in 1900. And uh, man, is there a history with this thing. This was kind of like the design. We spoke about this before. I don't know how I've never featured this. Could you imagine I look back and I actually have a video on this and I just completely forgot that I did it. I actually do have a video on uh, the shotgun where I show a kind of like a trick that you could use with the, the loading because it, it has a cutoff we'll get to that i'll show you later it has like a cutoff switch and there's like kind of like a trick that you could do if you're out like just walking in the woods with it um to have it uh, ready to go uh at a moment's notice without carrying it with a round in the chamber but um and that believe it or not i think that might be the video that i have up that has the most number of hits and it doesn't even feature a gun. It's just says called Browning A5 Tip or something like that. I should learn from that. Every single one of my videos, if I should do a video on like a K98 Mauser, it should just say K98 Mauser Tip. And then just don't even give a tip. Just do a video on the gun. Be like clickbait. Clickbait garage. So, um, the A5. Let's get back where we were. Sorry. 1900, it was patented. And, uh, yeah, it was made, it was made by Browning originally, and then, uh, Remington started making the Remington Model 11, and there was even a Savage Model 720, um, neither of those had the cutoff, um, but, uh, the history with this thing is that, in a nutshell, John Browning used to bring his designs to Winchester or Winchester would come and check his stuff out and it would it was just kind of like he would pay for the design like you'd say wow that's a really cool I'm buying that gun I want to buy that I want to buy that lever action rifle design that you made a lot of them they would buy and produce a lot of them they would buy and just shelf because they might have not they might not have had there might not be a reason to make 17 different lever action guns of the same caliber you know like john browning would be able to invent them and maybe he'd say well there were improvements with this one or this one is better for this reason or whatever but but winchester did it just strictly like business you know what i mean that the why why say like I, I don't need those five designs but i'll take this one the sixth one those five i don't want it was worth it for him to just pay for them just so that he doesn't have to worry about those designs being picked up by by Savage or Remington and competing with him, you know what I mean? So um, he kind of like had, it seemed, you know, the Browning brothers, there was one of them, those brothers there that was supposedly a pretty savvy businessman and I don't know, it just seems kind of like uh, the, the uh, that 
the uh, the Winchester uh, people were coming out ahead in those business dealings. That's what it seems like to me. You know, they, they were get, being a little taken advantage of. And but this design, this he knew, this was the first successful semi-automatic shotgun design. It was the first successful one. There were plenty of reasons, you know, um, you go back and read books on it, but basically ammo wasn't like it is today. Ammo was from company to company. They had different pressures. Even if you bought one company, a box of, of 12 gauge rounds, 12 gauge shells from one company, they could be vastly different pressures from shell to shell and if you're just putting this in like a fixed action gun like a break open and you're sticking it in you're closing it bang and you're opening it back up do you really notice you might be like oh that one felt a little weak oh whoa that one had a little bit of punch to it but you're not really noticing any huge difference it's just firing everything as long as it was enough enough of an explosion to get the the shot out of the barrel um, or or not blow it up anywhere in the middle of there was was fine you know but now when you're dealing with auto loading systems that are dependent on using the amount of they're using they're harnessing the explosion to work so if the explosion isn't the exact same explosion every time if it's a stronger explosion it might not function properly if it's a weaker explosion, it may not function properly. It, you know what I mean? It wouldn't have enough oomph to operate the action, or the other way around, it would be too much oomph and it would break the action. Um, Browning figured out a way using friction rings to make it where, if it was a huge amount of, of if it was a huge explosion, it was able to harness it and function properly. And if it was weaker, just by using those those friction rings inside they were able to function that way where it would you it would be able to shoot any kind of shells all kind of shells and it did it really well you know so uh he knew this was very special it was something he was really proud of and he did not feel like just having winchester go like i'll tell you what uh, you know here you go whatever that regular deal he he kind of put his foot down, John Browning, and was like, well, listen, for this one, this is special. This is something that I know is going to revolutionize um, guns. You know, this is this is a turning point. And right, too, it was like right around the turn of the century. You can imagine even in his mind, it's, you know, you know how you felt if you were around during, well, that's 20 years ago. So, so uh, you, you would have to be people that are 30, 35 and above to really remember that. Definitely showing my age here, but... Um, I remember, uh, the, like, the millennium, like, two, 2000. I remember, like, the feel when that, that year came, that it was 2000. You just felt like a very, you felt like a very forward feeling, a very, you know, that that things were turning around, and it was like a, a new, fresh rebirth, new direction. Everything about what you're doing, you're like, well, now it's a new, it's a new uh, millennium here. We're going to move in a new direction, you know, that kind of feel. So you can imagine, and it's 1900, and he's like, hey, you know what, we're going to, this is something special here, we're going to move in a different direction. And um, Winchester, and I say Winchester, there was, what was that guy's name, was it Hartley? What was that guy's name? The Winchester guy, you know, this seems like ages ago that we were messing around with these 22s, and I was all, my all of this stuff was in my head, but... The um, the head of Winchester basically was like, um, no, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna do the same deal that we did before. And John Browning supposedly just said, oh yeah, well, um, okay, I guess those test guns that I brought for your guys to check out are downstairs for me to pick up. <laughs> and uh, he was like, yeah, I guess they are. And he picked them up and he left and and then. Uh, there's uh there's a lot to this story that gets a little bit crazy. He um he was bringing this design to Remington, and supposedly the day he was meeting with the head of Remington to really, I don't know about finalize that deal, but to really you know sh to really bring that deal home, the guy had a heart attack and died. So, um, that could have really that was like an omen. That was all you sure? What was the head of Winchester doing that day? Where were you? On February 2nd, 
1900 when uh, the head of Remington died of a heart attack. But, um, yeah, but eventually, you know, it, it went to Remington. It became the Remington Model 11. And then that started like a whole, you know, love affair with uh, Browning and, and Remington. And, uh, you know, moving in a different direction. And he didn't mess with Winchester again. Like, that, that was a sore spot. They didn't just have a little fight over this gun and then move on and mend things on the next design. No. They were not, uh, I don't think, I don't think Browning did anything with Winchester until like, until like the war, like World War II, like with the Browning machine gun or something, that's something I, I remember reading, you know, it was like many, many years later before those guys collaborated, but, uh, this is, uh, the Browning A5, and, um, these are snap caps, so relax. They're my, sh my 12 gauge snap caps. Three. I know I put three in there. Do I have the shell, uh, the shell thing? Sometimes these, uh, these get weird. I forgot about that. There's like very tight tolerances with this Browning A5. And if you, and these things, they get, uh, they get chewed up. These are not from realistic snap caps, my uh, regular guy. I'm cheating. I don't think he has a uh, 12 gauge snap caps. I gotta check again, but um, let's not have them. So, uh, I didn't even pick up around there, did I? Oh, I did. See, this thing, it's it's sneaky. The action is, it's funky. It's really funky. Watch, it's got a cutoff here. So let's, I'm all over the place. I didn't even, I didn't even go through the features. Oh, well, it's got a cutoff. So if we click the cutoff over, we'll eject that round. And now you see it'll stay open like as if it was empty. Because it will stay open on the last round. So now, no amount of cycling will um, no amount of cycling will get a round to come up. Unless we click off the cutoff. And then we'll pick up a round. See, you don't even see it picking that up. Whoa. See how that spun around like that? That was wild. And, uh, oh, and see, we're not empty. That... Oh, I didn't even know we picked up another round. This thing's, this thing's throwing me for loops. It's a dangerous shotgun. It's like rounds flying all over the place. Look at what else it does. Watch how crazy this is. You have the action open, right? Now watch where I'm going. I'm going in the tube. I'm going down here. Wait, I, I remember doing this. I think I do have a video up on this gun. So this is a revisit. I don't even know. This channel's crazy guy's going senile doesn't even know what he did videos on do videos on the same gun like two weeks one after the other i don't know it was years ago um so yeah look we're going into the tube we're going into the magazine tube here right now watch what just happened it's in there baby it's loaded in there why does it keep flipping around like that that's crazy so yeah look there's nothing in there there's nothing in the chamber there's nothing in the magazine too. I'm looking right at the follower. Right now, watch this. <laughs> it's in there. That's what it does. That's how crazy this design is. This what would you if you were John Browning, would you just settle for that regular check that you were getting or whatever? I'd be like, man, forget about it. And then of course you just drop them in here and you know, you still have that type of like, you know, just bang, bang. If you, you know, that's why the cutoff is cool because you could leave this cutoff like that, right? See, now if I have the cutoff like that and I put around it, what do you think is going to happen? Can I even do that? Can I load it with the. It seems to be balking at me. Why is it doing that? Can I load it round in here? I guess I can't. Oh yeah, because it's not gonna it's not gonna let one into the tube if it doesn't let one out. You could see the uh you could see the thing right there that's blocking it off. It literally it literally just goes in front of the follower and stops the rounds from coming out. Yeah, nothing's getting past that. That's not fooling around over there. So yeah, let's uh let's turn this off. Let's load the chamber and two rounds. Click the cutoff. Now you can go bang, and it'll 
it'll eject and open. And then you could take whatever you want. You could put, you could drop like a slug in there. Bang, it's going to open. Drop a buckshot in there. Bang, it'll open. And then the second you want what you got in the tube, you just turn, you just flip that, and it's going to load your tube. This, this, this shotgun is sick. It's sick. I don't even know what to say. I'm floored by this thing. And you know what? This was the shotgun. This exact gun was the first shotgun I shot a 20 in uh, trap shooting with. I'm sorry, a 25. This is the first one I got a perfect score with. And, uh, you know, the people I was shooting with were bugging out. They were like, what the hell? What is that thing? You know, it doesn't look like it. doesn't even have a rear sight. You know what I mean? You just sight right along the hump. They call it the humpback because it has this weird, this, this humpback design here. Which, uh, you know, even the Remington, they all, they all had that. Very distinctive. And um, look at this guy with the rib barrel, the bead, the gold bead, the Invector choke, so you can put whatever chokes you want in here. This just had a regular cap. I found this, and it was very high quality and very nice with this sling swivel here. Um, and uh, I know you're all going to hate me. I very rarely do any modifications, but I did put this in, and it was a learning experience for me. I, I'm thinking that it's off, like, just the teeniest bit, but... Uh, you know, there's a special bit that does that, that drills and then chamfers a hole and whatever. I, I tried it on here. I think if I do it all over again, I probably wouldn't do that. But um, I did want uh, a sling on this thing so I could actually carry it. Back then, a friend of mine had a cabin in the woods, and I always wanted to just have this thing to carry around with me. Um, because, uh, you know, it really was a real quick five-shot shotgun that if you know if you uh, you were surprised by a bear um and you pulled this thing off your shoulder and just had five slugs it's very it's very fast and you know the the action let's let's get into this i'll show you i don't know if you guys know this or not but this is the long recoil action here there's not many examples you got the remington model 8 and then you got uh, a gun a shotgun after this that was kind of like this thing this shotgun, more modern, still had this type of action. So there's that guy. There's a couple of guns that have this long recoil action. Long recoil meaning, let's see how strong I am here, because you got to be really strong to demonstrate this. But as you can see, the whole barrel moves backwards. Can't see that, right? Oh man, it's really hard to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wind up uh, straining myself. But um, it basically, let's see if I pull the bolt back if it's easier to move the barrel no nope. even inside the whole this whole if you take this barrel out you know there'll be like that metal piece you've seen how that looks where this is where the the shell actually sits but there's a half a half barrel piece that continues all the way into the receiver even that's traveling here but what happens is basically you could see videos online where guys show it on in slow motion if you look at my remington model 8 video i have a buddy of mine i think i put that in that video i gotta look he was pretty embarrassed but i um i videoed him in slow motion shooting it and what happens is with long recoil is that as when you fire the the bolt and the barrel travel back together so as they're traveling back, no gas can escape as the round travels down the barrel. And then when the barrel, when the round exits the barrel, the bolt is all the way, is it just about that time, it's all the way back. So all of this is just to take up the time of the shell traveling down the barrel. That pressure that's pushing it down. And when it reaches the back, the barrel and the bolt traveled as a unit together. Then it, it hits and stops. The barrel comes forward with the shell in it. And that gets caught on the extractor and gets kicked out as the barrel comes forward. The bolt stays here. When the barrel comes forward. The shell gets kicked out. Then... 
the bolt releases, comes forward and picks up the next shell and loads it. So it's the craziest looking and feeling, yo, when you shoot this thing, it doesn't just feel like, you know, it just doesn't feel like bang with the shell. Like the, you could almost feel like with an auto loader, if it's gas operated, you could feel like, um, you know, that the, it, it, there's a little bit of the, uh, let's say, uh, of the momentum of the, the, like the recoil, a little bit of the recoil is absorbed. You can almost feel that it's sapped slightly with the gases that are operating the action. With this, you feel every aspect of that. You feel like every, like the secondary motion. You feel the initial shot and you feel all this weight hitting back and you feel that shock. That and then you and then the bolt and then the barrel comes forward and hits and locks into position. Then the barrel releases, comes forward, and then that locks into position. You know, so there's a lot of different there's a lot of movement. There's the movement of the whole piece traveling back and stopping. The barrel coming forward and stopping. Then the bolt coming forward and stopping. So there's the initial report, then that traveling back, bolt forward, I mean, uh, barrel forward, then bolt forward. So you feel every single one of those. So it's obviously really quick, but it has a very mechanical, like, when you shoot really fast, because it is very fast, and when you shoot fast, it has like a chugga, chugga, chugga kind of feeling to it. It's hard to explain, but it doesn't just have a very quick bang, bang, bang. It has kind of like a chugga, 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 chugga kind of feeling, like it's like a locomotive or something. It's totally unique. And um, and with, uh, with trap shooting, I don't know, somehow... That feel, that vibe was just, uh, it was working for me when I was learning. And when I got into the 20s and I just couldn't get a 25, I mean, you spend a lot of time getting like 23s. You're shooting 25 in a row. You're just not shooting them all in one game. You know what I mean? You might have like one game where the, you might miss one in the first five. So then you shoot at least 20 in a row without missing. And then you end that game with like a 23 because you missed like, say, number one shot and number three shot and so then after that you got more than that you got 22 after that um in a row and then you start the next game and you might get 17 before you miss one so then that's 22 that's 32 you know what i'm saying you could actually have upwards of in the 30s all in a row you just the thing is you just have to be focused enough and you have to be disciplined enough you have to have that concentration to start a game and not miss for that 25 forget about just 25 in a row is not enough but if you want to start keeping track till the first time you actually get 20 and you're like well i just got 29 in a row i just got 24 i just got 27 whatever it is to keep track of your amount of shots in a row without a miss Feel free, you know, you, I've known people that keep score, that write it down in a book and they know every game they've shot in the last 10 years. I never did that, but um, I knew how it felt when I um, got that first 25 game um, and it was with this guy. So that's why this, this shot can always, I always remember that. And it, it always, it felt like that feel, that like... Um, reciprocating feel kind of helped out through that it made it like a smoother and like a relaxing kind of thing so uh yeah browning puts like you know their nice moniker on there and it's long tang here these long tangs are nice but uh 1984 i've seen them from the 30s the 20s i've seen Browning. i've seen the remington model 11s they're out there. There's just never one for me. I don't know what it is. They always feel all raggedy or beat up. Whatever. I never see a nice one. I don't need one that's mint. You know, you see what I have. I don't have, uh, you know, there's no uh, safe queens here in the Millsap garage. But, but man, these things, every time I see one of them, they're so good. They were just so used. They were so good that they were just like, you know, it's like trying to find a really good old drill or something or hammer you know what i mean it's like those the tools that everyone always reached for because they were good it's hard to find those in really good condition 
You know, there's plenty of shotguns that were just bad designs and that nobody liked that people just, if they ended up with it, they just threw it in the closet and then years later you get it and you're like, wow, this thing is almost mint. Um, they weren't, even finding an 84 like this in this condition wasn't an easy thing, let's say. But, um, but yeah, the, uh, the older ones, I never really found one. The closest I came was... It was a Browning. It was an. It was a Browning A5. It might have been from the twenties, and I really I made an offer on it, and then the guy wouldn't budge. He, I, I couldn't. I couldn't go. I couldn't go as high as he wanted to go because the wood had been so sanded that the metal was so proud on the wood. I was just like, oh, but it was in good shape. It looked good, and somebody had reworked the wood, but they just. They sanded a little too much or it had been refurbished one too many times. And I was like, I'm going to have to buy wood for this thing. And I'm just like, I don't, don't want to do that. So just whatever. And that one fell through. But I just, I came really close. It was, uh, it was only like a difference of like 40 or $50 or something like that. And I wouldn't budge. And, uh, and neither did the, uh, neither did the old man. It was obviously a favorite in his collection. So I understand. But, uh, yeah, where else, where else can we go with this? What do we got? I got the page open over here. Let me see what uh, what other information we got. You got to read about the history of this guy. Where is uh, where is my Browning book? Hold on. Why do I not have my Browning book out here? Do do do. Where is it? Uh, you know why? Because I don't really. Oh yeah, I do have my Browning book. Not even gonna detain my Browning book. Because I'm going to start getting into, I'm going to start reading into the Browning book. And I'm going to be like, oh yeah, and then there's this history about it. But listen, we're going to, we're going to come back. And we're going to, uh, we're going to um, take a look at what did Remington do. This Obviously this isn't Remington, this is a Browning. The newer Browning, an 80s Browning. But, um, but Remington, they, uh. They continued with this design in an interesting way. And we're going to take a look at that next. Um, I just wanted to pull these out. You know, doing that shotgun, doing the, uh, what the hell was it? The, uh, the Overland. Taking that thing out really made me uh, realize that I got some really cool, uh, some cool shotguns in the safe there that we really should be uh, checking out. Yeah, the Overland. You know what was funny about the Overland video? Oh, it's probably going to be about the same thing that happens with this video. Is it was like I got you get this notification when you look at the analytics, right? It's like right on your home page when you open up your your YouTube when you're a creator, and it said uh, it was like DefCon. It was like the thing was like whoop whoop. It was like you have. Your, your view on this video compared to your other, the average of your other videos, this was for the Rossi shotgun, the side by the coach gun. It was like it's down 73%. Your viewer, the amount of minutes people viewed was down 82%. <laughs> the number of hits was down by 287%. Nobody wanted to watch that video. And uh, you know what? What are, what are you going to do? I heard that C and Arsenal got demonetized. YouTube is so terrible. They demonetize all my videos. It's, it's not going to be long before. Forget about demonetization. I don't care. I'll make the videos for, for free. Uh, the monetization is just something that's interesting that I'm just playing with. I have not received a dime from YouTube since since uh, I started this. You know what I mean? You have to reach a threshold before they give you any money. And then it seems like, uh, you know, like maybe when you get close to that threshold, then they're like, all your content isn't good for YouTube. You know, they, then they get rid of you. Who, uh, who knows? This is so weird. C and Arsenal. You know C and Arsenal. Othias and May Winchester and uh, Mark. They got Mark uh, Kov, Kovac. Kovac. What well, I forgot his last name, but he he's an, an awesome gunsmith and and those guys do. Uh, it's mostly World War One stuff, but um, excellent videos. Those guys are excellent. That channel is great. Um, and, uh, how they demonetize them. They don't, they don't do anything. What are they, they don't even take anything apart, really. They don't even show the innards of, well, I mean, Mark does when he does, like, the gunsmithing, but he's just, like, sanding stocks and showing how to do woodworking and showing how to work metal, and it's like an art. 
Like, how are they saying that that's... That that's how does that break YouTube's rules? This is what this is what the community is all about. This is just uh, gunsmithing and working on old historic firearms. This, I can understand if somebody's like, "Yo, you got it? You do you have an, an AR? I'm going to show you how to make this turn this thing into a machine gun that shoots fire, dudes. Come on, let's do it." I can understand getting rid of a video like that. I or you know, that's definitely not what our sport is about. Um, but demonetizing him of all people as the it's like the most benign sweetest history channel kind of thing i don't know it's like uh busting steve irwin for animal abuse because he grabbed an alligator's tail it's like don't you realize how much that guy cares about animals please so it's like you know well thias isn't gonna hurt anybody yeah, his cha his channel isn't about using guns for anything uh nefarious well anyway I digress. I hope you guys don't mind me just uh, vamping. But uh, it's got a safety down here. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little click safety. The checkering on this thing is awesome. Oh, this gun is great. Light 12. That's what it's called. Yep. And uh, I'll find an old one one of these days. But Because uh, there's a lot of history with this, you know. It'd be really cool to get one from like... You know, a, 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 an old school Browning one, like from when they first, before even Remington picked them up or something. Something really crazy like that. That would be a, that would be a gem. Or like a first year Remington. That would be cool. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to kind of follow along. I'm going to follow along with this design into Remington and, and um, a couple of Remington shotguns that I think are interesting. And a couple of other shotguns. I'm just going to move into some shotguns for a while. That's all. I'm just going to talk about some shotguns. Because that's where the channel is going. And uh, YouTube does not run my channel. I run my channel. And I don't care about demonetization. I just want you to know that if there's a mod watching right now that has going to either push the button or not push the button for monetization, please push the demonetization button. And then switch over to C and Arsenal and turn their monetization back on because you guys are insane. And uh, that's it. I love all my subscribers. See, it's you guys that tune in. And it's just, there's always just a slight increase, a little bit here and there. And I noticed that like most of my hits are, believe it or not, like 85% of the people that watch my videos are non subscribers. So I don't know what those subscribers are doing. I think they hit the subscribe button and then died or something. That must be what happened to a lot of people that subscribe to my channel. But to those loyal people, thank you. And I did post a couple of Colt pistols up there, and I was like, anybody interested? And in three days, three people said yes. And to you three, those are three of my loyals. Uh, thank you for responding. And I'll get to those eventually. But right now... Those are they're gonna sit on the back burner for a little bit. Although I love those cool pistols, I just want to talk about some shotguns. Some are gonna be old, some are gonna be in the middle, some are gonna be kind of new, um, like this one, an '84. This isn't exactly you know uh, any kind of antique or anything like that. But uh, you know, to some of you younger guys, it might be a lot of people. I think most people watching this weren't even born in '84, right? I mean, that was a long time ago. I was uh, graduating, I was just about to graduate high school. I was the class of 86, but I got out a year early. <laughs> so uh, thanks again, guys, for, uh, for being, for your patron, patronage. That's, uh, it's very nice of you. And uh, hang in here with these shotguns. I promise you, I'm going to bring you some interesting stuff because... Listen, I know there weren't a lot of Milserp shotguns. There were a few, and we've talked about them. But, uh, you know, I featured a few. But uh, let's go down a little rabbit hole here with some of these uh, interesting shotgun designs. This one was crazy. This was interesting to, to look at, right? It really was. And, uh, and these things are crazy. They're crazy to take apart. They're just insane. Like John Browning, this was a, a period. Something happened to him. He got, like, struck by lightning while he was sleeping or something. And, and woke up and just was like, and just jotted this down and came up with this thing. How crazy is this? How crazy is that to, I've seen, I've shown this to people. I've been like, watch, look where it's going. Look, you can look, look in here. Look where it's going. Where's it going? It's going into the magazine tube, right? You ready? Where'd it go?
Well, it went in the magazine tube and the action slammed closed. No, it didn't. It did not. It went in there, baby. Now, what if we put one here? See, you could... Let's see if let's see if we could screw John Browning up. I bet you this screws it up, right? Because we're going in the tube. How does it know that that's there? It doesn't really know. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, see? Didn't like that. You can't do that. Oh. You cannot do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. That's what John Browning would say. Whatever you do, don't do that. Man, I wish I could hang out with him. I've said that it might be a little scary. I've said that before that he might be a little maybe a little weird hanging out in that shop with the candles burning he's sitting there drawing out some kind of new gun and you're like yeah you got 17 designs on the table over here john isn't that enough no i got another idea crazy the browning a5 i highly recommend getting one for skeet shooting uh, for trap shooting trap or skeet they're good for skeet too and that's a wrap ladies and gentlemen i'll see you real soon we're gonna come back with a uh follow-up and check out some shotgun lineage see you later